Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I make a pin cushion using a bottle cap as the base. I use a few other supplies, just a little fabric and fiber fill, which is just pillow stuffing. And you can even use an old pillow to find that stuffing if you don't have some fiber fill on hand. It's a fun process and you can customize the pin cushion to make it for any holiday or any color that you want based on the fabric you choose. So it's kind of a fun project. Let's get started. So these are some of my handmade pin cushions. This one is actually one of my favorites and it's also the most kind of a little obscure. I made it just from a simple bottle cap from I think this was a little bottle of something to drink because I wanted a little teeny pin cushion that I could use. I could just hold just enough pins that I could travel with it if I wanted. And my goal was to make this small. And I also just took a little swatch of scrap fabric and some trim. Here's one that I made that you've seen me in videos, particularly lately, where it's just a little miniature of a bird bath. Because it had that little concave part to it, I could use it beautifully as a pin cushion. I just chose some fabric, attached it, and now I have a lovely workable pin cushion. Here I have a little sake cup. And it's kind of beautiful. It's a little bit larger than this, but it holds a nice array of pins. I used purple fabric in this one. I just love the way that came out. For this one, I used a little pie tin, a little pastry tin here. Couldn't be any more simpler. Here I have this little, I think it might have been a salt cellar at some point. Um, it was in the heart shape. It was perfect for little Valentine's Day or just little pink things that I wanted to sew. And I just love the ability to use my favorite fabrics or the colors that I want. Or when I'm doing a presentation, if I wanted a particular color pincushion, well, I can make my own. Here's another one with a salt cellar. And I just stuck in this little aqua fabric. Now, you can use a bottle cap. This is just a plastic bottle cap that would normally go to the recycling or the trash. But there are other things you can use. So you can use bottle caps of any type. I prefer the ones that are a little deeper. This one would work. It just it makes it easier to create when it's deeper. Today I'm going to use this one. This is one from a cap of vitamins. It has a nice deepness to it and it's a very sturdy cap so this will be great. And it's a larger size than some of the others. You can use a little pastry tin. If you don't have these, you can get these little tins from mints or different things and you'd only need the bottom half. The top half you could possibly get away with, but it's a little shallow, so I wouldn't recommend it. The other thing I love is when I'm at thrift stores is finding these little teeny little tchotchke type things. I think this was a candle holder or maybe an egg holder, but I just think this little concave area would be perfect for a little pin cushion. And then I'd have a cute little bunny. I think I might do this in all white. So it wasn't particularly Easter themed, but it was maybe just spring or something very elegant and cute. So to get started, I'm just going to take the base that I'm using here, which is this cap, and I'll gather my supplies. So to make this pin cushion, I have my cap, I have fabric, and a little piece of trim. And that's because I just don't want this part of the cap to show. So I'll just attach this. So I cut some trim a little bit larger, just wrapping it around very quickly so I could see, and then I'll trim it to size at the very end. I have a needle and thread. We're not going to do a lot of stitching, just a little bit of basting. And I'll show you that. It's a very simple stitch. I prefer that rather than just using all hot glue. Some people like to use all hot glue. I have just a little filling. This is fiber fill from a pillow. I might need a little bit more. I tend to like my pin cushions really over full, so I might grab some more of that. I have a ruler and a pencil to measure out my size. And then I have a glue gun. I'd suggest a low temperature glue gun so you don't get burned. I'm using the high temperature now because I live dangerously. So to get started, what you want to do is measure your bottle cap. So the inside of my bottle cap, the area where the stuffing and the filling and the actual pin cushion are going to go is roughly two and a quarter inches, more or less. And that's a good enough measurement. It doesn't have to be completely precise. But what you want to do to measure the fabric that's going to encase the pin cushion is you want to measure it three times the width of your internal base here. I need my fabric to be 6.65 .6 inches. I'm going to go six and a half inches because you do have a little leeway. So to start with, I want to make my measurements. I always start with my center point. So half of six and a half 
would be three and a quarter. So I'll just make my three and a quarter mark here. I'll make a little X. And so I have my three and a quarter and I'll measure my six and a half. I'll flip my fabric around. If you have a circle or a compass and you wanna do it that way, by all means, go right ahead. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have a little bit of fabric all around when you finally create your circle. So I just like to do it in a few spots. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You just wanna make sure you have enough fabric to go around so that you can baste it to make your pin cushion. So I have a bunch of little marks here with pencil on the wrong side of the fabric. And they're not gonna show, so I can use pencil without a problem. And now I'm just gonna connect those marks, kind of making that circle come to life. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanna make it pretty close, something representative of a circle. Make sure I hit my marks. So that's pretty good. And you can see it's three times the size. So now I just wanna trim around it, and I like to leave about an inch, three quarters of an inch or so, around that circle. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to make sure I have enough fabric to use so that when I base the fabric for my pin cushion, it gives me enough that I can anchor it with some glue. So that's a great imperfect circle. So from here, I have the good side of the fabric and the wrong side. You just wanna baste your circle. Basting stitches are just large stitches that were designed to hold fabric together and they were eventually gonna be taken out. We're not gonna take out our stitches, but we're gonna use the technique of basting. So on the wrong side of fabric, I'm gonna go in with my needle, I have a knot at the end, and I'm just gonna make large stitches all the way around that circle trying to hit the marks and the lines that we made. I have a good distance between each of my stitches. So after I pull my needle through, I'll just straighten out my fabric a bit. And I'll just continue this all the way around the circle. It's okay if your circle doesn't relax completely. You're just trying to gather this material to make your pin cushion. So now that I've based it around my circle, I'm gonna take my needle and thread and come out on the good side of the fabric. So I just have my needle exposed over here. So at this point, when I pull the thread gently, my circle will close up. So I'm just gonna gently pull it, holding down the center of the fabric. And I get kind of a little bit of a pouch and I can play around with where the um, thread is pulling to make that little pouch. That looks pretty good, and as you can see, it forms a little circle. So now I'm just gonna loosen the basting and the pulling up so that I have room to stuff it with this little fiber fill or the filling. So I'll just tuck it in here, deciding how much I need. I can always take it out if it's too much. I like it to be fairly tight, so when I pull this, I want there to be a little bit of snugness. So I think I'll add a little bit more. And now I'll just pull it really snug all around. So it's like a little bit of a dumpling here. And you can see from the top, it's nice and tight. So now I'm gonna make sure I have it pulled snug and I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go back through just one time, just to any spot on the opposite side. Again, I'll re-pull it snug. Now I'm gonna wrap it around just a few times, four or five. And then I'll bring my needle through again. And now I'm gonna just anchor my thread. So I like to bring it through again, wrap it around once or twice, bring it through again, and I'm really just trying to secure it in place. After I've done that a couple of times, I'll just take my thread and make a little knot very close to this wrapping over here. 
and then I'll maybe do it two times more just to make sure that that stays tight. So now from here, I'll just clip off the thread. My little pin cushion is already done and it's quite secure. So now I can start assembling it. So now to assemble it, I want to take my pin cushion and press down, kind of splaying the edges here of the little tail of the pin cushion. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to make it so that it's even. So now I'll take my glue gun and I'll just put some hot glue around the sides and the base of this cap. And I want to work fairly quickly as the glue, you know, cools down and hardens. Once I have that in there pretty well, I want to make sure I have it on the sides. I'm going to come over here and stick my pin cushion in place. And I'm going to hold it down to make sure that it really secures. And I'll hold it down until the glue cools. Now, because I used hot glue, it'll take a little while to cool down. I can flip it over as well and just hold it into place. So now that my glue has cooled, I want to go in there and just finish it off with some trim. This step is completely optional. Now this trim is just slightly thicker than the cap, which is what I want because it hides that little edge here. So I'm just going to make sure I measured it correctly, which I did. It's a little longer than I have here and that's what I want. And I'm going to start by just adding a little hot glue just to the side here. and putting my trim in place. Hold that down. And while that secures, I'll just let that dry. Once it starts to cool down and it's easy to handle, I'll just continue adding a little glue here and there and going around the edge here, attaching this trim. Holding it in place and continuing on. If there are any areas where the pin cushion is coming up, I'll add a little more glue, put the trim down, and then hold that pin cushion in place. I want to get right to the end here, and then figure out exactly where I want it to end. So I'll just trim away a little bit, and I'll do it just on a little angle. And lastly, I'll put a little glue on the end of this trim and then press it into place. I want to make sure all areas are nicely tucked in and glued. I can use my pencil to hold it in place while it cools. And so then I have my completed pin cushion and it looks adorable. It's ready for pins. Just stick it in place, add a needle, and now my pin cushion is ready to go. So that's how I make my pin cushion. It's kind of a fun and easy technique. And depending on the base that I use, I can make a pin cushion very large, very small, or anywhere in between. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.